Dice Fog is a creature collector dice based roguelite, which sees us guide a monster trio through various creatively designed battles, perform actions with adjustable dice, weaving our way to a large locked door, while one huge flaw is dragging down the whole gaming experience. After the constant urge to not compare this to other famous creature collectors, I finish enough runs to tell you what Pokey I mean Palboy I mean Dice Folk is all about, and if it is a real fun or a refund. In a world where humans have been pushed to the brink of extinction by an evil source, we are tasked to save the world by taking down this dooming presence in a fun and enjoyable combat system with a cute and weird art style. Yeah, the tone doesn't fit the design. But regardless, we begin our journey with a trio of creatures called chimeras picked from a certain set. Jumping right into the simple designed map with various paths to explore, we encounter battles, shrines, thrift shops and a boss fight for each of the three areas. With each finished run, we gain more creatures and gear and once the hard mode is unlocked, we have more difficulty levels to challenge ourselves during the many battles we take part in. Encountering enemies sees us face off against up to three po- I mean chimeras. Each turn sees us throw down various dice with one side deciding our chimeras actions and the other determine our opponent's skills. The order in which we use those dice is entirely up to us and sees us strategize in which turn we want the enemy's attacks to launch. These attacks usually are performed and targeted at the current leader, the chimera that sits at the middle position. With dice sides to switch positions, shields to block the next incoming hit, debuffs that reduce the enemy's health every time they move and numerous different other effects, the at first simple looking combat system can become as overwhelming as the Pokemon catalog. I mean, what the hell is a scrap? This combat system is far more than just simple dice rolls, since every Chimera has their own unique ability, with some activating debuffs when rotating, healing allies at the end of a turn, enhancing other Chimera's attack numbers or increasing their own damage output the more equipment they wear, to name a few examples. The Caesars create team compositions focusing on specific effects, with my favorite being the Bleeding build. We build up bleeding stacks on the enemies and when they rotate, the bleed will damage them according to the stack number, similar to a malfunctioning carousel ride. Even though the tree of chimeras allows for a decent amount of combos, the limitation of just traveling the three can be a slight downer. Every time we encounter a shrine or a scroll master, we get to take in a new chimera to switch up our team. However, this means we have to throw out one of the already owned chimeras, so there is no benching option, which is by far not the worst flaw of the game. And I will show you the real blunder of Dice Folk in a minute. The mansion equipment we can attach to our chimeras enhances the already enjoyable combat system even more. They can upgrade the passives, damage or health or have entirely different effects of their own and can be found in the various shops or when taking down one of the many bosses. These boss fights were surprisingly easy going during most runs and allowed me to unlock the stone gate at the end of each run quite quickly. This gate is being unlocked by successfully finishing a round with each talisman. The chimera set we pick at the beginning of the round and behind the door is a fourth area, hiding the true end boss of the game. This nightmare for an optometrist has interesting mechanics, but nothing my dreidel of death couldn't take care of. And once we beat the many eyed dragon, we unlock the trial mode for more challenging runs. This paired with the amount of chimeras and growing encounters with different NPCs and shops, the replayability offers hours of fun without getting stale. The slightly repetitive yet powerful soundtracks can become a small annoyance, but the biggest issue of Dice Folk is that the mouse cursor is the one from Windows. I mean, come on, it's 2024, couldn't you? Apart from that, the great replayability, amazing combat system, the cute art style and the decent price tag sums up to a real fun instead of a refund. Would you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to do your taxes. <laughs>